we're talking about um, the ABC of budgeting, stretching the coin during this period of, of the crisis. Um, and on the screen, I want to introduce Jess, um, <clears throat> Jess Gashemi. She's a founder of Nakuru County Moms. She's an amazing group of, of, of ladies who have um, begun to have a positive discussion about not just Nakuru, but about themselves, about growth. And um, just, I actually want to, um, to bring you into the conversation. Just tell us a little bit about Nakuru Moms, if you don't mind, Jess, so that everyone can know who we're talking with this morning. Act uh, thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Waitaka. I hope everyone can hear me. Good to see everyone. I, at least I recognize some names. Frida, I recognize some names. Um, good to see everyone. I think um, Nakuru County Moms is, is, is an online community. It's a safe online community that was created seven years ago. That is 17th wow. April, 2013, yeah. So we just turned seven years old a few uh, days ago. And uh, the main and sole purpose of, of creating the community initially was, uh, initially when I moved into Nakuru uh, from a different town, I needed to just to get by uh, within the town to know uh, what is going on, where to get stuff, where to get the good deals. You know, as a mother, you have to actually uh, look into saving every coin. So if That's it's right. clothes where you're getting for your children, the groceries, the hospitals where you get to uh, just uh, visit and just get the reviews from other parents. So okay. it was founded seven years ago for that sole purpose. But our main mission is to grow together as mothers where we, um, we focus on uh, the spiritual part of growth, emotional part of growth, and uh, just the economical part of growth. So we have themed days that actually enhance us to be able to grow in that area. So in a short uh, way, that's how I would introduce Nakuru County Moms. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. What are the main discussion points uh, during this uh, COVID-19 crisis that we've been going through? What have the main discussion points on your group been like, uh, Jess, if you don't mind? Yeah, I think it's it's, it's a mixture of many things. I think number one is how to um, just navigate the crisis that uh, the pandemic that has just uh, affecting all of us. So mm -hmm. how do you navigate this season as a business mm -hmm. person, as a uh, woman, or maybe yeah. as a mother, I'm sure everyone has been affected. Most businesses have been affected and most uh, just how to navigate uh, this season uh, yeah. even in your area of business and in your area of uh, work, mm -hmm. because most are also working from home and mm -hmm. others have been terminated in terms of maybe employment. So they yeah. need to know how to navigate this season. Another okay. point of discussion has been um, uh, how, how, what other ways can someone engage into, like what are opportunities are there, even in this crisis, what are what are those opportunities that are looking into us that we can grasp yeah. into them and just uh, maximize on them and uh, utilize them and make, make the season quite easier in terms of navigating it. So, right. and also uh, the issue of children being home, mm -hmm. homeschooling and the new online platforms <laughs> that most schools have introduced. Yeah, it's a major concern because yeah. um, Children are at home. They have been home for quite some time. And yeah. uh, of course, that affects so many other things. It affects the budgeting in terms of uh, how you, you are spending. It yeah. affects, there's a lot of dynamics that have been affected in this season. So I think those three are the main, the main discussions for, for us. Wow. Yeah. So I, this time around, for sure, and it's amazing that you brought in all the various factors. When you talk about budgeting or stretching your coin, uh, during this period, definitely it's to know where your money is going. That's so important. I think, as you said, there's some new things that we didn't know about and we're spending more because, yeah, as you're right, homeschooling is not, is not that simple. Um, yeah. Just now, um, we realized we need more screens in our house, for instance, uh, because like for us, we have three, three uh, daughters and each one of them is in a different class. 
And uh, whereas in the past, they would maybe share, we have a tablet and a, and a laptop that they can be able to use. Now we are beginning to see, okay, if mom and dad are using their laptop, like I'm using my laptop now, uh, my sweetheart is also using her laptop for her work. Now there's no laptop available for the children now to do their, uh, the work that they would usually be doing. So we're actually now saying, hey, do we need to buy another screen, another tab? You know, those are the kind of costs. Um, what are the ideas, Jess, that have been uh, within your group and the team that you've been talking with? What are some of the ideas that have come up in terms of generating more revenue or more cash during this time? What are the business ideas that have, been, that have come your way as far as that is concerned? Ideas. Uh, of course, right now, because we are at home, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we cannot ignore is that people have to eat, right? That's so, right. yeah, so everyone must eat uh, food. Uh, children are eating, everyone is at home eating. So, of course, one of the ideas is to go into agriculture uh, where you can um, uh, sell groceries or fruits and or just even engage into agriculture as a whole, uh, agribusiness as a whole new uh, form of entrepreneurship. Because yeah. as you see, um, agriculture is, whether there's COVID, whether there's any pandemic, whether they, it's something that will remain constant. People will always be hungry and people will always eat. Eh? So I think agriculture has, I, I've seen a, a number of women who have embraced agriculture and just groceries and uh, just the cereal business as well. Um, another thing is transport, transport yeah. industry. Uh, everyone is at home and many people are ordering food online, for example. They are ordering their stuff from the supermarket. So another opportunity is actually the delivery services. So you're able to meet, uh, close that gap for the client who is at home. Eh? and uh, just reach out to them in terms of what, charge them a fee, and then you can be able to uh, even look into it later on, as I'm sure people will embrace more online buying and online services and all that. Huh? Another thing is that moving your business online is, is really yeah. key right now, yeah. because most people are online. I think a research that was done by Facebook uh, says that, uh, Almost 80% of people, when they wake up, the first thing they check is their phone. Uh, so just moving your business online is really key. Not just, even not just your phone. If you think about yeah. it, yes, yes. If you look at it right now, we've been looking at the options where I think internet use uh, from beginning of this year till this point has gone up by 50% globally. Wow. 50%. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a massive leap when you think about it, that twice, you know, I mean, almost half of what was there extra on top. Yes. So you're right. Yes. Just continue with your thoughts. Sorry, I just wanted to add to your, your thought process. Yeah, I'm sure going forward after the COVID-19 is that internet will be almost a basic need in any, every home. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure more people will embrace online buying and selling online schooling as well, even homeschooling as well. So even being able to just equip yourself in terms of skills, some soft skills on digital marketing would be really key for mm -hmm. businesses right now. I think those are some of the few opportunities that uh, I have come across or I am thinking on and also I've seen women discuss on as well. That's right. And so we must, all of us now be adjusting and the adjustment process um, just like any other business just like any there's some element of trial and error we're trying to figure out what is it that we want to be able to achieve and even as we as we begin to look and and uh, choose the various things that we're going to do it's based on needs just like any other time um, that, that we're talking about um, when we when we begin to say uh, for instance start a new business, it has to be relevant. What, what is the problem that you're solving? As you said, um, transport is a big issue right now. Uh, how do you get those goods? And so even some of the suppliers are now beginning to get into that space. So it's so important for us to think through it, 
and and begin to to find solutions to that. So that's that's excellent. New 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 income areas that are going on. In in the discussions uh, um, around, for instance, the spending patterns. You mentioned food is a is a major issue that we are discussing right now as families. So what have the how what has your wonderful team of ladies been thinking about as ways to save uh, on food money within that within the house? Uh, food money. Uh, I think my everyone is at home. Mm -hmm. And everyone are, it, is eating at home. So in terms of food money, there has been a skyrocketing of the, of, of the, of the ex expenses because yeah. children are home. Number one, you know, they're not engaged. So they are always, they are not as engaged as uh, going out to play and just, they, you know, when, there's a way when children just go out and play with their friends they forget food sometimes so That's they're right. just home <laughs> near the kitchen and near the near the the fridge so of yeah. course the expenditure has skyrocketed in most homes i'm sure if uh, yes. we ask a few mothers who are maybe in this platform would maybe uh, bear witness so there's been a lot of uh, expenditure. <laughs> and fathers, and fathers. yes oh and fathers as well <laughs> because and fathers as well so saving um on food has been uh one of the key uh key thing that maybe as a mother personally i have put a structure to ensure that we are really saving and not spending all that we have gotten from food yes. yeah yes. so how have you done it how tell us yeah we're, we're so yeah, so one of the things that I have done is, uh, num number one is to just put down a menu on yep. a family menu on what we are eating every day and also a snack, a snack list for the children as well. So, so that it can be able to guide me into bulk buying because you see, um, if I bought like 10 apples, and maybe I have three children myself. I, I'm a mother of three. And uh, I want them to eat apples on Mondays and apples on maybe Wednesday, for example. So if I do not have that check, a uh, snack, snack list, for example, is uh, it will, they can eat all the, the apples in one day, in one <laughs> sitting. We all know children, they can actually eat <laughs> in one sitting and finish everything. And adults like me. Yeah, mm -hmm. and <laughs> adults as well. So for me, what has really helped is in actually uh, buying, buying in bulk, but first following my menu. So if I know on Monday I'm eating ugali and some vegetables and some maybe mala and beef or whatever, so I'm able to know what amount of a unga I will buy for the month, for example, or maybe yeah. for the week. If for those mm -hmm. who do weekly weekly uh, purchases, so yeah. I'm able to plan on how I'm going to spend in the supermarket, and then bulk mm -hmm. buying. Maybe when I go to the stores that sell in wholesale, I'm able to save a few coins as well. Mm -hmm. But also mm -hmm. the snack the snack timetable has been really really uh, instrumental, and it is. Uh, really important, especially in this season, so mm -hmm. that also the the children are not spending all the snacks that you bought and then mm -hmm. being left without something to eat. So that is one of the things that I have embraced. Even the groceries, mm -hmm. I buy maybe once a week so that I'm able to, according to the menu again. So if on Monday I'm buying spinach or groceries and all that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will purchase for the enough for the week. Also, mm -hmm, another thing mm -hmm. is that I have embraced a um, balcony kitchen garden. So uh, through planting uh, spinaches and skumas and some few greens on my balcony. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. also I'm seeing, I've not started eating <laughs> or <laughs> feeding the family from the balcony uh, groceries, but I, I see it as a way also of, of saving uh, on food money, yes. Yeah. Yes, Mr. And that's that's the kind of innovation that we're talking about because not maybe maybe not everybody has the land that you can be able to go out and plant. Many of us live in apartments 
Um, and and it's, it's so important that we begin to think through what can you do? And there are many options, as you said, uh, even balcony gardening is, is one of those new things that is coming up because if you have a bit of space and you can be able to get, I, I know one of the tools that is being used is simply sacks. You don't even have to have expensive um, uh, uh, gardening tools that are out there, just a sack with soil in them and you plant some skumawiki. And that's some of the things that you can be able to eat, plant some of the herbs and spices that you're going to use. And these are the kind of small things that make a difference along the way. And you'll be surprised how much uh, in terms of savings that there can be. And so my invitation to all of us here is that please remember, as, you, as, you, as we're thinking through this, as we're thinking through what changes we're going to, to make in our lives, um, it has to be purposeful. And what I love, Jess, about the discussion that you're having is you're approaching it from all the various elements. You're approaching it from the side where you're talking about what, where is my income? So you're saying, how do I supplement or grow my income? Uh, and you're being purposeful there. When you look at now your expenses, you're also being very purposeful and saying, okay, where are the cost points? Because all of us are adjusting. I'm sure when you, uh, the first week when the children were home, that surprise of that there's actually no food left in the pantry, then you say, you rework and say, okay, now what can we do to work? So um, Christine online is just saying, Christine Kehara is just saying, yeah, have a snack menu. So even when you go, when, during the day, what I love about my, my sweetheart, my, my, my wife here, uh, she's, uh, she's also like you. And she knows when she's buying snacks or she's putting together a, the snacks that she has, she has come home with, she has a plan for which day they're going to be. It's like school. Just the same way that they would go with a snack to school, that's the same snack they're going to eat here at home. Not, nothing more, nothing less. And these are very powerful things. So um, uh, this is saying having a menu and eating leftovers in the fridge before, you, before they go bad and cooking fresh food, that's excellent ideas. Frida is saying buying in bulk and preserving them well uh, can save a lot of food money. And that's true. That's one of the things we've been talking about since the beginning of Centonomy as one of the tools to be using. Um, and then uh, Christine also was, this is early on, Christine was saying saving on food money, buying veggies uh, within, your, within your estate, uh, probably from, from the, the, the kiosks that are nearby for two reasons. Let's, let's be honest, let's be honest here. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging us as much as possible, keep small businesses alive. If there's a restaurant that is near your house that you used to frequent and go and buy chips on the weekend, go buy chips. I know it's not healthy, do it once a week, but what you're doing is keeping that business open. Uh, go and do takeaway from that place. I love that uh, Christine also mentioned, go to, this, go to the kiosk near your place or to that small uh, grocery that's near your house because it's keeping that business alive. Look, we all must go to the supermarket at some point. There are some things you can only source from the supermarket. And when you go by, no problem. But if there are some things that you could do within your community, it makes a huge difference. Build those relationships around your community because even those small businesses, they need your business. Um, there, there are two restaurants near our place. And what we're trying to do is that um, as much as it is possible, the same way that we would do on, on a normal weekend, instead of going to the restaurant, at least we call them and buy something. Because what that does is keeps that, that business alive. And if we can all do that, there's a huge, huge uh, potential for us to learn and to grow. And we are all respect definitely uh, the government for the choices that they've been making is that they've kept a lot of the economy open. Some of the countries that have gone into a complete shutdown, there is no economic activity at all. And so the, the, the government has chosen to go in this direction. We applaud them because what it has allowed is that some economic activity is going on and it's important for us to be part of that. So if you can uh, keep your local businesses alive. Just was there any other comment because I want to now actually get into uh, the budgeting process. Was there, was there something else that you wanted to share from your experience that you'd like people to know about um, and, how, and how you can help with this stretching of the coin at this time? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I think, um, I believe one of the things that as parents we can do because we have a mixture of fathers here and mothers as well. Um, 
is being creative and using, utilizing the hands that you have at home. I'm sure some have daughters who are above six. This is a very great opportunity to start introducing them to chores, for example. I have a six, almost six year old girl. So this is the time to start introducing them to chores, like they can wash their small clothes, they can start doing dishes here and there. And I'm sure uh, just utilizing the hands that you have, uh, yes, sadly, it will uh, take away the, the, the job for the mamafua or something, but it's also help you save something. Because if you're at home, then you don't need a mamafua. For example, you can save that 500 and just do your own laundry. And also you can also make it so practical as a parent to ensure you're also in, uh, bringing in a value in, to your children that if they see you doing your laundry, they are more encouraged to actually take it up as a, as a, as a lifestyle as, as parents. So I think utilizing the hands that we have, let's, let's uh, reduce costs on, on, on that end <laughs> and, uh, and just maybe uh, reduce cost as well for buying bread you can bake at home as parents. Uh, I know bread uh, is being consumed a lot at home right now. So bake cakes, oh, bake scones, yeah. get and it involve your children as also you do this and it will, by taking advantage of the time that you have with your children, so you'll be teaching them on some of the home values and also uh, saving coins as well. I think I would want to add that uh, to stretching the coin, yeah. That's brilliant. And, and uh, for the whole family as well, get everybody involved for two reasons. Number one, definitely there's some saving in cost, as you said, in case you, if you do have assistance um, with, with a house help or, or with somebody who comes to do laundry, maybe you can cut down on that cost um, as well a little bit. But the other thing is also time. So one of the things that we found very early on is that um, we need to manage the time that we have with the family and especially with children. Um, we found that the time that you'd have spent, let's say driving to school and driving back from school, uh, the time that you'd spend doing homework, all those various things is now gone. And so there's a lot of free time and you can't go outside and run the whole day because first of all, it's not safe. And also uh, it's, it's not very productive. So one of the things as you're saying is it's taking up time to actually do those household chores now together as a family, um, separate the responsibilities and get everybody involved. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant point. And I really appreciate that, uh, Jess, even as, as we continue with the discussion for today. So I, I wanted to take us through because this is, this is one of the tools that we've been sharing as Centonomy because we believe we must take responsibility and be pup talked about is the purpose involved in all of the decisions that she's been giving us some advice on. Or each one of us needs to begin to be very purposeful with what we're trying to do. And some of the comments coming in, thank you, uh, Marion, uh, Maureen, sorry, uh, Kisiero, who said, yeah, go buy stuff on market days. It will save some money. Take advantage of offers on items in the supermarket. Yes, please take advantage and always have a list to avoid impulse buying. These are brilliant, brilliant tools that everyone here can be able to put into place. And one of the things that we must begin to do, even across the board, not just, not just on those daily, daily um, activities, is to put together a monthly budget. And what you can see on the screen is what we call at Centonomy our ABC budget. And what it does, it begins to separate the things that we buy. Let me explain what a budget does. A budget is not so much about how much you have and how to spend it versus what do you need and want to spend on. Because many times people start the budgeting process often, and, and I understand why, but we often start the budgeting process with how much do I have? And then I'm going to decide how to spend it. That's okay. That's a good starting point. At least you're taking control. So how much do, am I earning and how much am I going to spend? Let's just say, because it's a good round figure. Let's say it's a good round figure for the sake of discussion. Let's say we're budgeting 100,000 shillings. Let's say as a household, um, 
husband and wife are bringing home in total 100,000 shillings per month, okay? So if we have 100,000 shillings, then you, then you spend it, okay? And that's the normal practice, which is okay. And you'll spend it most likely on the things that are, that are very familiar to all of us. So where you live, so you're either paying rent, you're either paying a mortgage, or you have your own house. And if you own, if you own your own house, there's some costs that go into that maintain, maintenance of that house, um, taking care of it, um, land rates, maybe that you're paying to the government. So there are still costs for housing. Uh, so that's a major cost that goes down. Then we talk about, for instance, as you said, food, so the essentials, so household shopping that you're going for. And then maybe you've got loans, maybe that you're paying off. And then you've got school fees. So many times we start off with those big ticket items, you know, the ones that are at the top of your mind. And often they're the ones that have been determined by someone else. It is the bank that tells you to pay, repay your loan. It is the school that tells you how much you're supposed to pay in school fees. It is your landlord that tells you how much you're supposed to pay in rent, all those things. So those numbers we know because somebody else determined. But what we have found, and is so powerful, I hope that you're hearing, is that the smaller items that we are, we are talking about now, airtime on your phone, the groceries are not, you see, when you go, buy, when you go to the shop in the, in the supermarket, you tend to buy everything at once. And those smaller items, you went there to buy bread and milk, but you come out with a chocolate, a sweet, um, you buy a magazine or something else. That's why all those things are kept at the counter when you're standing there. 1.5 meters away from each other. You have nothing to do but to look around. Oh, that's a nice chocolate. You pick it up. Oh, that's a good magazine. You pick it. You didn't budget for it. Uh, and I love that's why Maureen's comment was important. That budget actually makes a huge difference. So we are challenging you in order to put together this ABC budget, it is important to know where your money actually goes. So one of the tools that it will help you through this budgeting process, and it is so powerful, especially because of all the changes that we're going through, is to track your expenses. So please write that down. Write down, I must track my expenses. Um, if you would like, you can ask uh, Marilyn, who's one of the co-hosts here. Marilyn is the one who's been inviting everybody, and she'll be sharing her, her contacts with you later on. It's marilyn at centonomy.com. Um, she can send you a, an expense tracker. There are many available, you can use ours. There are some that are available in the app stores, in the, in the Play Store, on your mobile phone. Download one and use it. The issue is to track your expenses. Because when you track the small, small items, it makes a difference. Let me give you an example, two examples, because I think they're very powerful. The first one was a friend of mine. He's a, he's a radio uh, host. And uh, he's a radio host, I think at, fa at uh, Family, yes, at Family Media. Um, and uh, Pastor Okumu is there, he's, he does the morning show. And when I went there one time, he said, when he tracked his expenses with his family, he found they were spending 500 shillings, 500 shillings, that's about five US dollars, 500 shillings every month on chewing gum. He had never seen it, but what happened was he would drive, as he's dri driving to the office, they have these vendors on the streets who, who, who sell chewing gum. So he'd buy in the morning, and as he's driving back home, he'd buy another one. And then when they go to the supermarket, he'd buy some more. When he tracked 500 shillings on chewing gum. And he was like, that doesn't make sense. That's, that's 10 loaves of bread, essentially, on chewing gum. So not that he shouldn't buy chewing gum, but he had never seen it before. And he could begin to see, if I know where my money is going, then I can make a choice on that. The second one is my wonderful house help. She's an amazing lady. She's part of our family. The kids love her. She's brilliant. Um, and you know, you would think that somebody who's close to minimum wage, because that's, and that's the truth. That's, that's uh, what she's taking home, close to minimum wage. Um, you'd think there are no, there's no space in your budget. You know, you're, if, you're, if you're earning about 15,000 shillings a month, um, there's no space for anything. 15,000 and you have children and everything. But we found space in her budget. One of the ways that we found that space is that we found she's spending daily on her phone. And I don't know how many of you have this. Uh, th there's, there's a thing when you call somebody on the, on the mobile phone and you hear a song on the other side, wh what is that called? C type in the chat box and, and even in the comment box that you have, if you can. 
just type for me there. What what is that called usually when you when you go into that space? Ah, thank you, Nkata. Uh, that's Kiza Tune. Yes, I think that's the brand that is used by Safaricom. I think the other brands are for a similar version on on other mobile sub subscribers. Ring callback tune or ring back tune, something like that. Thank you. So callback tune. Thank you. So I've called her a few times, especially during this time of of uh, uh, the, the lockdown, because now she's not coming as often as she would. And every time I call, there's a new song. When we did the calculations, because, and people think that that song that you're listening to is free. It is not free, you're paying for it. And then you're paying maybe between one and two, between one and three shillings, I think per song or per item that is there. She has more than five of them. That means she's paying more than five shillings every day of her life for me to enjoy the song when I call her. She's not even the one enjoying the song, but, I'm the one enjoying, I, I don't understand it, but somebody maybe can understand it if you can tell me. So if you're looking for a gap within your budget, we can always find those small areas because when you think about it, it's five shillings a day. So in 10 days, that's a loaf of bread. You know what I'm saying? In 10 days, that is some groceries you could buy. And even that five bob can be able to buy you something even for that food, that, you know, that salt that you're going to, something on your day that is different. But we can, each one of us find, um, that's, <laughs> I'm being challenged already, but I'm just saying those are the spaces that are there. Kate, thank you so much, Kate. Dennis, she has said one shilling per song and that supports artists, uh, my loaf of bread. I agree with you, it supports those artists and I have nothing against those artists. I'm just saying, make sure you know you're actually paying those artists. When we talked with my house help, she didn't know that she was spending more than five shillings a day. Uh, on a, from her budget that she had not seen on that credit that was coming from her phone. And the important thing is to know, uh, Kate Dennis, I'm just responding to your comment. Kate Dennis, I'm just saying, I'm the one who started this session by saying, support your local uh, restaurants that are near. You go and buy some chips every so often. I agree with that. But I'm saying it must be a choice, a conscious choice that you're making. So let's go through now, once we've understood where our money is going, now we can make some decisions and look through this ABC budget. So I want you to look down, look at the screen if you can, make sure you turn on your screen and look at what we are going through. At the top, it says how to stretch your coin, okay? I want you to stretch the money that you have. So the ABC budget, we have three categories, three categories. We have A, B, and C. That way you will never forget. The A are the essentials, okay? essentials. That is, you cannot live without food, you cannot live without water, and you need somewhere to live. And when it comes to basic survival, and for some people during this season, it is going to be, we must survive, then your essential, your A budget becomes the core of what your life is about. The second one is B. B is important but not essential. Can you see important, but not essential? Look at some of the items that are in there. If you drive a car, it may be important to you. And I, like my car is important to me. It helps me to get to work, take my children to school, go shopping and do all these things. So for me, it is important, but it is not essential. Especially over the last two months, those cars have been seated outside here, uh, almost doing nothing uh, during this period of time. Not only that, but if I need to get around, there is public transport. If I really need to get around, there's public transport. And you know what? Sometimes even some of the, the shorter trips that, you know, to the supermarket just down the road to the kiosk on this other side, you'll still, some, some of us who are a bit lazy like myself, will still get in the car to drive 500 meters down the road. Why not walk? So I'm not saying that a car is a bad thing. I am saying it is sometimes important, but not essential. I'll use another one. Many of us are, are crying to get back to the barber shop or to the salon. Uh, doing your hair at this time, it's now a time where you can be able to separate, to separate and say important, but not essential. If I grow a little, a little bit of a beard, I don't look so smart. Maybe I look a bit rough, but guess what? 
my beard versus buying bread for my children, you see the difference. It is important to look good, but it is essential to have food. So we are not saying it's about, we are saying they're important, but not essential. That's what I'm talking about. Loans, sometimes you begin to see, even the government recognized that and even began to put in some, some measures to make sure that people right now, because you may be struggling with income, you're unable to pay your loans. So the government is trying to help and just say, look, uh, we can't be, you can't be listed on the CRB at this time in case you default. Um, and and the, the banks have been told, please do help those who have problems repaying their loans. So they recognize it is not. Maybe going to the gym. Um, I need your, your feedback on this. I know Marilyn, Marilyn, you're a, a huge fitness uh, guru. In fact, at the office at Centono, Mar Marilyn is the one who teaches us all about how to stay healthy. She's brilliant. Uh, we, went on, we went on a staff outing um, and during the staff outing, when everybody is, is just enjoying themselves, Marilyn was waking up in the morning and in the gym. Uh, I, I was, oh, wait, I, Zach. <laughs> no, I have to tell people the truth. And that's because it's important. But imagine, Marilyn, if you couldn't go to the mm -hmm. gym, what can you do? Work out at home. That's right. Even in, the, even in a yeah. small space. You can be able True. to do press ups, do some squats, do something to build up. Yeah. <laughs> Christine, uh, Marilyn, Christine is telling you, you look so good. Uh, that, that was oh, thank Marilyn. you, thank so you, Christine. Christine. <laughs> you yeah. uh -huh. So, watch this, people. We are saying it's important, but it is not essential. And then the last part is your C expenses, everything else. Okay, everything else. I'm coming to the questions. I can see there's some questions coming out. Things like, um, where does tithing fall? Where does, yeah, we'll talk about that shortly. C is everything else. Everything else meaning it is not important and it is not essential. So I'll give you some examples. So as I said, for instance, that trip to the local, I told you the restaurant that is just down here near our place, it's neither important, neither is it essential. Okay, but it's a good thing to do and we enjoy sometimes going and eating food from somewhere else. The entertainment costs that we have. Um, for now, I know so many of us are in the house and all we are doing is spending time watching television and sometimes paying for that television. Remember, if you're paying for TV, it's a luxury because there's free TV in this country. So if you're paying for Netflix, you're paying for whichever other companies are, DSTV, Zuku, let me name them all so that I'm not accused of, uh, of hitting one of the brands. All of them, Sky, Sky, what is the other one called? Star TV, Star Times, BAM, all of them. If you're paying for entertainment like TV, it is neither important nor is it essential because there's a free option available. So when you're able to look at all your costs with the ABC budget, then you can make some choices. Because remember, we want to stretch our budgets. So if you come down to the, to the example at the bottom there, a household budget of 100,000. Let's say you had 100,000 in savings and we're trying to look how do we stretch the money to the longest period of time. If we continue to spend on A, B and C expenses, the essential, the important and everything else, that 100,000 shillings, 100,000 shillings may take us, if you can look at the, the example at the bottom of the screen, it could take you about one month finished. But your A and B together, because you're saying it's important and also essential because we're trying to keep the economy moving at this time. If you were to cut out your C expenses as much as possible, you could survive on that 100,000 shillings in your savings up to two months. Okay. So you have stretched your 100,000 savings into two months from one by simply changing some of the things that you're doing with your life. When you move down to the last example there, this is now what we're talking about. Because I, I, you know when we're talking at this time, we are very cognizant that not everybody has the luxury of a salary anymore. Not everybody has a business at this time. I was really struck by this because there's a, there's a dear friend of mine. Um, I love music and we, we, we play in a, sim in a band at the church. And one of my friends there, he, he's, a, he's a musician. And, and my brother 
uh, he teaches music at schools and he also performs with various bands uh, out there. And within a day, he went from business to no business. Schools were closed and all public outings were shut down. He went from an income to no income. And so when we're talking like this, we understand what you're talking about. And we're saying, if you're in a situation like this, you need to just period it can be. And that means going down to A only. If you look at the bottom there, if you only spend on your A expenses, food, water and rent, and even those ones now you begin to negotiate to have a way around it, it can take you from your savings lasting you for only one month to your savings lasting you up to three months. And whatever income is coming in is lasting you that period of time. But we must be purposeful in the way that we're doing this. The problem that we often have is that we, we say one thing and do something else. And what I loved about what Jess was talking about earlier on is that her and the team of moms in Nakuru are being purposeful. They're saying we're not just taking life as it comes to us, we are addressing the issues. And it, when it comes to the process of wealth creation at Centonomy, we have always been about being proactive rather than being passive. It is taking control so that you are the one in control of the actions around you. Even right now, and what I loved ab about my friend, the one I, I gave as an example, so his income sources were cut. He quickly has, in this period of time, been able to change his model, and he's now offering shorter classes online to the same people he was training. We can't sit back and just say, oh, life is bad and it's not, we must take action. So even that positive action Jess was talking about, we must do as well. So I want to now take a couple of questions and I'll tell you a little bit about Centonomy along the way because there's some really good questions that are coming up. Now, Susan, where is Susan? Ah, very good. I can see you there, Susan. And I want to hear your question. Susan, a room. Hi, Susan. I'm here. Hi, hi, Waidaka. How are you? Hi, everyone. Hi, I want even to see your face. Can you show us your face? Oh, you want to see my face? <gasps> Um, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not taking time, but let me try. <laughs> the button at the bottom of the screen, you can switch on the video. Uh-huh. Okay. Ah, there can we are. I can see and I can see with everybody in the family. You know, we learn as a family now, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I think as I was, as, as uh, you were going through this, yes. what struck my mind and as I was looking at it, I was asking, you know, as as part of maybe a Christian community, you expected to be tied. Yes. Uh, okay, it's a practice that has been there. So I'm yeah. looking at it and asking myself, where does it oh. fall in terms of, uh, you know, if you have to go to essentials mode? You know, That's so right. I think for me, it was some bit of conflict in that space. And I was just wondering then, is it something that we put as important or others at this particular <laughs> point? How do we go about uh -huh. it? So just you're, seeking you're... your... Just taking the views of yeah. you and the rest of the team, yeah. And I think you got some responses in there. You're asking a faith question, um, <laughs> which, is, which is amazing that you're asking about that right now. And I'll, I'll, can I pose the question back to you, Susan? And, I, and I'll ask you, in terms of your life, where does your faith rank? If you were to put it with everything uh, in, in there, uh, this is a question I've been asked many times and I always put it back to them. If you were to rank, let's say, your family, your children, your husband, your work, and God, who would be A, who would be B, who would be C, Susan? Yeah. I think I'm that's, asking. That's, Aya, you can't run away. Yeah. Aya, you must answer. No, you've given me something to think about. And obviously, it's, uh -huh. it's an essential. Yeah, but you no, see, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's, I, I hear you now. Yeah. So it's I, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, for me, it is. For me, it is. And by God's grace, we shall continue to support the work of the church and all that we are doing. Definitely, it is for me. But maybe for other people, it's not the same. And what, what we're trying to say is this. You need to place what is essential where it should be. Please understand, like even as an example, not all food is essential. Do, do you understand? 
So True. chocolate is a food. Takeout food is a food. It can't go in the essential. You put it as a C expense. You get, you get what I'm yeah. saying? Um, yeah. for, we, we must, and that's why we're giving you the power to take control of your budget by saying, what is an essential cost for Susan? What I'm hearing from you is that your faith is important to you. Therefore, it, is, it comes at that point of essential. For other people, yeah. you know, the attendees of church, uh, it might be important and they can make a choice at that point. But what you must come to terms with is what is important for you. All right? True. Have I responded? Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. I, I appreciate that. And that's the kind of interaction I told you that we have in our classes. Um, we really, really work very hard to ensure that everybody gets a chance to bring uh, those things uh, into that kind of discussion. Um, there was a question, where do investments fall? This is a brilliant question. I love that. Uh, who was this who was asking this? Frida. Now, which Frida was it? Uh, Frida Gatwiri. Hi, Frida. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Ask your question live now so that we know what we're talking about. Oh, the question I just posted, yeah? Uh, okay, yes. so my question, I think this one now I was thinking in terms of, um, okay, in fact, in, I meant investments plus savings. Like just okay. in case, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, dating myself back to before the pandemic. Like That's how would right. we, That's right. now it, it, uh, it almost cautions you against such, a, such an event as now. That's right. So I'm asking you, where, where do you think you would place a, B, or C, where would you place saving and investing? Uh, I think investments like, could probably wait a bit, but saving, especially like a uh, an emergency fund, I would put it at A. I mean, it's good to put something aside just in case you yes. lose your job in one day and you survive for the next few months. Yes. I think that's brilliant. And again, please go towards what you believe is important. And I love that you've said an emergency fund. Now we know that the value of an emergency fund as being essential. James is joining you in that discussion. It's essential because we never know when an emergency comes up. So if you don't have any cash put aside, you might find yourself in a place where it's difficult for you to make such a decision. And so why, we are, why we're having this discussion today, Frida, and thank you so much for that question, is to begin to make us think because sometimes we don't think before we act. And if we can think and say, wow, saving is essential. Why don't I put some aside? I believe investment is also essential. Why? Because you want to be growing at the same time. And that's what we teach at Centonum. So if you have not taken those opportunities to begin to grow, to take those decisions, then it becomes very difficult for us to grow. I want to tell you a little bit about our programs and then we can take a few more questions as we go forward. But I really appreciate the, the comments that are coming through even on Facebook. I've seen some of those questions. We're gonna address them just now. Um, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, Maureen, I've seen your question. We'll come back to it just now. I want to just tell you a little bit about the programs that we run at Centonomy because they're designed to help you to break through and to actually find what is important to you and to be able to grow. So we have a program called Centonomy 101. Um, and this program is designed to help across the board. It helps you to manage money. It helps you to understand how money works, um, the compounding effect of your investments, the power of an emergency fund, how to deal with irregular expenses. You know, irregular expenses like school fees, the ones that don't come every month, how do you deal with them? Then we talk about investments. How do they work? and which investments will help you with various areas. So which are the right investments for savings? Which are the right investments for growth? Which are the right investments for income? And then we talk about how to, to, to protect your money. How do you protect your money? By paying the right amount of tax, by being able to understand insurance and taking, make, making sure that you're insured. Number three, about planning your estate. And when you say estate planning, it's not just about when you die writing a will, no, no, no. It's about organizing your wealth in order for you and your generations to continue to grow. And as well as Chama's investment groups, 
and then how to implement. So this is a program um, that is starting in June, managing your money, investments, and protecting your money. Those are the modules that are coming there. And it's amazing because at this point, you can be able to register and you can register um, uh, with that 20% discount, 20% discount, the lockdown discount that's coming up right now. And all you need to do is go to that, um, sorry, the slides are not moving the way I wanted them to, to move. I want to go to the next slide and just show you um, this last slide. There we go. Oh, it has refused. Let me come back to it. I don't know why the slide has refused to come through. Because we don't have time, I'm just going to let you know you can register today for Centronomy 101. And that's the program that I was, I was trying to explain to you just now. I don't know why the screen has refused to move on to the next part. Um, <clears throat> and that's what we're working on. Has the screen come up, Marilyn, now with the Centronomy 101? Yes, I can. Ah, good. Sometimes yeah, it's it hard to know on this side what we're looking for. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure, it has. It has. You can register today for 1,500 shillings. I'm just seeing if that pay bill number will come up on the screen. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 986850. Uh, the account number is your name, and 101 is the one that you can be able to get there. There's a 20% lockdown discount. So you register with 1,500 shillings, and then you pay monthly installments, monthly installments of only 12,000 shillings. And it's starting on the first week of June 2020. This is a brilliant time to begin to learn. We also have another program. I told you, I don't know why the slides are not moving the way I wanted them to move, but we have another program called Centronomy um, Entrepreneur, the Centronomy Entrepreneur, which will help you to build great businesses, how to structure your business for growth, how to ensure that your business can be able to pay you, and also to ensure that you understand money within business, the cash flow element, the capital element, and how you can build a great business that grows beyond you. That this business will put money in your pocket rather than just take money out. And you can do to the same pay bill number, but the registration, I told you, the numbers are not coming up here clearly. We will send you all the details, but the registration for the entrepreneur program is 2,200 shillings and then three monthly installments of 15,000 shillings. Uh, the pay bill number is still there, 986850. So for 101, it's 1,500 to register. For entrepreneur, it's 2,200 to register and we'll be sending you those details. Um, and you can put in your name and 101 or entrepreneur. Both of them are starting the first week of June. So you have some time to prepare, but this is a great time to be learning so that those skills begin to be implemented now, even as we begin to think how we will overcome this crisis of COVID-19. So, Please do check out our website. Actually, that's the one thing I think I can be able to show you. Let me take you to the website so that I can show you all the various programs that are available right now at Syntonomy. And then we'll be able to share from that perspective. Marilyn, I don't know if you can see any of the, of the questions that are coming through on, um, on Facebook. I, I'm not sure if you can see any of them that have come through on Facebook as well. If you have, I'll, I'll take some of them now. But if not, I want to show now what we are doing here. So if you go to our website, we've got all the details available there. You simply need to go to centonomy.com. You can see that on the screen right now. And you can see all our courses are now available online. And there's a potential if you'd like to register, it says register online. Click on that where it says register and it'll open up for you and you can begin to do your registration process. Um, as you can see, it's opening up. So you put in your name, you put in your phone number, you put in the course that you desire. Let's say you put in Centonomy 101 and your email address so that then you're able to go through that and make sure you tell us that you're not a robot and, and uh, put in the details. The, the pay bill number and everything is there. And in case you want to pay through your bank, the details are also available there. It's as simple as that. And once you've done that, you get all the information from us on how you can become part of it. If I go back to the homepage, actually, I can just go to online courses. You begin to see 
um, all the various programs that are available, but we're really trying because they're coming up uh, very soon, first week of June, but we've got lots of courses available as well. When you click on online programs, it'll give you the full list of online programs that are available. Um, just do so as soon as possible. We've got the full list that is there and the dates that they're going to be starting. So do check us out on the website and register today so that you don't miss out on your part of the program. Yes, before I take all the questions, I just wanted to ask if you have um, some parting comments that you'd like to share with people uh, so that we're able to work from there. Any parting comments, Jess? Hi, Jess, hi. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, so, so, so you can just give us a small parting shot on your side. Hello. Hi, we can hear you, Jess. Right, go ahead, can you hear yeah. me? Yes, we can. Yep. Um, I, I think I'm very grateful as part of uh, just to get to hear uh, some very key instrumental uh, principles that will help us uh, not only now in this season, but these are lifetime principles that will help us as as individuals and even as parents and even as entrepreneurs into just managing our own finances so that we are able to know where uh, to get the value out of it. So for me, is, I'm really grateful for everyone who was able to join in uh, for this session. I'm really, really grateful. I thought, I actually thought that most of us who <laughs> will have very many hitches at drop off in in here and there, but I'm really grateful that you are able to join in. And I just hope that we will be able to uh, exercise or maybe implement that which we have learned. I think issues of being able to track our expenses, that was very key for me. I think I do that, yeah. but I need to just tighten up the, the gaps. Uh, track each and every expense, be it a That's chewing right. gum, be it tropical in town, you know, uh, yeah. or yeah. maybe, yeah. yeah. So just being able to to track uh, our expenses on a daily basis, yeah, I think it's really really important uh, for us to implement it in our own lives. So I'm right. just very grateful, and I hope that most of us will actually join in into uh, the classes so that we are able to even learn more. Uh, knowledge is power, and uh, without knowledge, then we lack understanding on how to. Uh, utilize our resources. So thank you so much, Waitaka and the team. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jess. And yes, it's about that practice even that you go through. And I'll even share some of some of the tools because we go way beyond just the budgeting process. By the way, for those who are looking at us and saying, what is this Centonomy 101 about? It's not a budgeting class. In fact, we spend probably less than 20 minutes on the budget as we begin to think about the strategy of investment. How does debt work? How do investments work? Uh, that's what the process is about. So the budget is simply the tool that helps you manage your money. We talk about it for 20 minutes out of more than the 30 hours that you're able to get through uh, in the program. Uh, it becomes a lot more purposeful as we go forward. So we'll, uh, um, I invite you, please do register today um, and, and begin planning to get into the class. It's amazing because now we're able to talk to people in Kisumu, in Dar es Salaam, in, um, Mombasa in Akuru, it's so amazing that you've all been able to log on, uh, register today and we'll begin that conversation on the first week of June. But right now I'll take a couple of questions. We don't have much time, but I'll take a couple of questions uh, to follow up. We've got uh, Felistas. Hi, Felistas. I saw you raise your hand. Felistas, are you there? <laughs> Hi, Felistas. I've switched on your microphone so you can actually just talk to us. All right, if Felicitas is not there with us right now, we shall move on. If you, if you come back, we'll be able to respond to you as well. I'll take some of the questions now. Um, yeah, Karibu, we have a discount. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, Ma Marilyn, please tell me, if I made a mistake there on the registration, please correct me. Oh, Marilyn, that's why you're here to help. <laughs> Wait, well, we, we are, go, we are giving mind. a discount of. <laughs> so on the registration, we are giving. 
Uh huh. So we are giving a discount of five hundred. Five hundred count is one hundred, a thousand shillings for the registration. So we are giving a discount of five hundred. People are registering. We are giving for a thousand bob instead okay. of fifteen hundred. Oh wow! Yes, great. Great. No problem. And then they put one hundred and one or ENT, depending on what they're registering for, right? Yes, yes, okay, yes. Okay, great. Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Charity. I, uh, when my slide stopped working, I got a bit confused. Apologies for that, but thank you so much. Um, very good. This is fortunate. She's saying I'm a university student. Um, okay. Which program is best for me? We have a program for university students age probably 17 to 24. You don't have to be in campus, but that age group, because some of the ideas, the concepts are more relevant in that space. Age 17 to 24, we've got a program called Centronomy Campus Edition. But if you've started working and you're in the workspace, you're already doing, uh, you're already earning an income, you already know which direction you're going. Even if you're within that age group, you can still take Centronomy 101. Uh, but specifically for age eight, uh, 17 to 24, these principles of wealth creation are, are designed and the examples are for that age group. Um, because now we'll not be talking about a mortgage after 10 years, Jess and I can have that discussion. But for campus students, you want to start thinking about how do we grow? So th that's an option for you there. Um, let me just look, thank you for the information. Awesome session, great, 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 great. No, the 20% off is not on the registration fee. The 20% is a lockdown discount on the fee for the program. So um, the program is usually 40, for in a total of 45,000 shillings, uh, um, but now we, you're getting it at 36,000 shillings in total, um, which means it's about 12,000 shillings per month, per month. Um, nearing retirement, any program directions on personal finance? If you're nearing retirement, the Centronomy 101 program is for you because all the tools are used to help you to manage your wealth at whatever stage. And especially in retirement, the course is designed for you. I think this is Greggy. Greggy, that's the name that I can see. If you're nearing retirement, 101 is perfect for you. Some of the discussions there have been amazing. If you look at our open day video, you can go and check out. I've got an amazing testimonial from a good friend of ours called Gladys Wamaida. Um, and she, she, she came into the program uh, later on in life. And she, she can share a lot more about that, but the 101 program is just for you. Um, what differentiates the campus edition? That's D Jones from Centronomy 101. So campus edition is shortened and it's slightly cheaper because we must always be able to, um, uh, to address the cost. You know, a university student doesn't have the water. You learn, and then the content is designed for you. So you learn money management skills, which you do budgeting process, time value of money, how debt works, uh, which are the core of what we teach in Centronomy 101. And then we begin to learn a few other things, the basics of entrepreneurship, career development as well, because we realize as a campus student, you've got lots of things coming up. You're still deciding which, am I going to take a job? Am I going to get into business? What am I doing? So we've in, incorporated the element of career development from our career hub program. We've incorporated the element of entrepreneurship from the entrepreneurship program and the money management and investment skills. So it's a rounded course for students uh, and campus students uh, age 17 to 24, because it, 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 en it encompasses all those different things. Later on in life, the money management and investment skills need to be focused. And that's why we have the Centronomy 101 program, because then you have decided that's the way that you're going. Uh, best way to kill debt. Ah, Sally, you have asked me a very good question. I'll show you some of the things that, first of all, it's to understand debt. So Sally, I want to show you one of the tools that we use in the program. It's called an amortization schedule. This is what banks and circles use to calculate your loans. If you can see the whole thing, Sally, it will, and this is one of the tools we use in the program, it can help you to make some decisions about your debt, okay? So first of all, just understand when it comes to debt, look at what it is. If I borrow 1.5 million to buy a small car, like um, what is that, a Toyota something, Toyota, a Toyota saloon car, 1.5 million, 
I borrow it not at 13, but now in the banks you get 14% for five years. You can begin to see what the costs will be. Let me increase the size so that you can see better. So I borrow 1.5 million, 14%, five years. Uh, I'll be paying every month 34,000 shillings for 60 months. And I'll pay a total interest of 594,000 shillings. So watch this. I borrowed 1.5 million for a car that's worth 1.5, but I've paid an extra half 600,000 shillings almost for that car. So I paid uh, 2.1 million shillings for a car that was worth 1.5 over five years. Five years later, Sally, that car is worth less than 1.5. Now you understand when you're buying a car, understand it's not an asset because it's just taking money out of your pocket. It's a good thing to have. That number, it's a big expense because you drive around, it will get you to the things that are doing, but financially, it's not an asset. If you can understand this principle, then you can make certain choices about your debt. Certain things that can help you to get out of debt is to decide that saloon car will do the same thing as a much smaller car will do for you. So rather than spending 1.5, if you spend 500,000 instead, 500,000, look, your monthly payment goes down from 34 to 11. You have saved 20,000 20, shillings every month and the car is still taking you to the office and coming back. For most of us, it's one person usually in the car. So if you're now a car for 1.5, a car in 500,000 shillings, that's 20,000 shillings every month. And you have saved, saved in interest close to 500,000 shillings, half a million. Sally, if we can begin to understand these principles, then you can make a choice on which car you want to buy because that will save you so much money and get you out of debt much faster in the decision that you make. So we actually go through this whole process that you can see on the screen. We even share this in the class with all the students, this schedule. So you can look at all your debts and begin to make a decision about what you're doing there. So Sally, I hope I've responded to your question. There are a couple of questions that are coming through also on Facebook. Let me just look at that. Um, indeed, quarantine pre presents good opportunity. That's good. Um, some of us can't tell where our money goes. That's true. And it's because we choose not to see. Who is this who wrote that? Um, um, Bifi Wambua. Yeah, you're right. It's hard. Um, instead of buying pizzas every Tuesday, maybe every other Tuesday, and then make pizzas from home. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, there's some ideas on money market fund. Um, that is good. Good. I think we've gotten that. What's your view on mortgages? This is Christopher. Christopher, I want to show you what a mortgage looks like. Then you can make a decision for yourself because we, we do this in the class. A mortgage is simply a long-term loan. Let's talk to Christopher. Where is Christopher? Uh, Christopher's iPhone. Hi, Christopher. How are you doing? I'm well. Now, uh, you're asking about a mortgage. Uh, where would you like to buy your house, Christopher? In Nairobi. Yes, where in Nairobi? Please, please. In Centronomy, we must be so specific. <laughs> Parklands. Parklands. How much is that house? Five M. Five M. Now we are talking. Let me show you what that mortgage looks like. So you get five, one, two, three, one, two, three. Christopher, do you work for the government or a bank? Backlink service. Sorry, you work for? Pu public service. Public service. Do you have any special rates? Public on service, mortgage? yes. Yeah, that's good. So, do you have any special no, rates? No, market on rates. Market rate 14% 14 for now. Okay, we don't know where it will go. How long are you taking yes. that mortgage for, Christopher? Let's say 15 years. 15 years, let me type that in. 15, 15 years. years. Now, I want, you to pay, I want you to pay attention what happens to the amount on this other side. So 15 years, let's go. So Christopher, when you look at the loan, you borrow 5 million, 14% for 15 years, okay? Monthly, you'll be paying how much? Can you see on that side? Can you see that number? That is 66, yes. Thank you very much, 66. For how many months? 15 times 12. Here, here, here. It's under there. 186. 186. 180 months. How much interest will you pay? 
on that loan? 14. Ah, ah, interest down there. Oh, Which number six, Ham. Ah, ah, look at it properly. Six. Point? Nine. So essentially 7 million. If you add yes. now transaction costs and all those. So uh. you pay interest of 7 million. The house was worth how much? Five. Five million. So what is the total you pay for that house, Christopher? Seven, five, that's 12. Thank you very much. What do you think now? Wow, that's a killer. Are we together? So it's important to understand because look, Christopher, yes. I want to show you in that house, what is, if you were to rent that house, how much would it cost, sir? That's 25 to 30 K per month. But a mortgage yeah. you'll be paying how much? 60. Oh, that's a... <laughs> wow. That's the reality. That's it. I'm showing you what it looks like. So when we're in the class, we show why I asked if you work for a bank or if you work for the government, because if you can get some people who are there, they get cheaper interest rates. Okay. And yes. sometimes it makes sense to do so. Okay. Okay. So, the, so I'm trying to, when we're in the class, we are very practical. We don't talk in general. And you know, people I'm seeing Gabriel, they are saying mortgages are killers. No, let me give you an example. My brother-in-law works in the U S in the U S he's a policeman. And, uh, for them, their mortgage rates are 3%. So it's 3%. For him, we act, he actually moved into a house because it's cheaper to take the mortgage, Christopher, than it is for him to pay rent. So it depends on where you are and your situation. So in the class, we are very practical. You see, this is my brother-in-law in the US. If he was borrowing the same as you, it does not make for, sense for him to rent. It's better for him to take a mortgage. But for us here, we might be taking, making a different decision based on our financial status. Imagine even with 14%, there are still some people able to take a mortgage because of their financial status. So we're not saying a mortgage is not possible. It is possible depending on your financial status. So we talk about that in general. I hope that's useful, Christopher, as we go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. And that's the kind of discussion we have in the class, okay? so. I'm inviting you all, please do register today. As you can see, uh, Centronomy uh, at only a thousand shillings, pay bill is 986850. Account number is your name and then 101 or entrepreneurship because those are the two programs that are there. Marilyn, how do we reach you? Marilyn, are you there? I think she was there a minute ago. Uh, but for everybody who's been on the call, especially via Zoom, uh, you will receive an email. And even on, online, you can be able to, on our website, be able to get through. Oh, Kate is asking me a question. Last, last question, Kate, uh, because we are now out of time. Hi, Kate. I can see your question there. Yes, I'm, I'm wondering. Yes. Um, what, what are your thoughts on rent to buy? Um, give me, you have to explain that for everyone to understand. Okay, so maybe not everybody understands what you mean. Okay, so for example, I've seen the house on the market and I'm yes. interested in that particular house, yeah? Yes, but yes. now I'm not able to buy it one, you know, a, a one off, and I don't want to yes. take a mortgage. Uh -huh. So I'm asking, what would be uh, your thoughts on? getting in a, into an agreement with the with the owner of the house so that I can rent the house as I'm renting the house I'm pungusaying the <laughs> amount I would have been pay I would have paid as a lump sum that's my I question. hear you yes and and when we have this discussion thank you so much Kate for the question when we are in the class we never give um because of the noise in your place I'm going to mute your mic but you'll hear me clearly um, when we are in the classroom, you never hear a trainer at Centronomy tell you, hey, don't go to rent to buy or don't use mortgage or don't rent. No, we must understand and do the calculation and say, 
if, for instance, I can get a good interest rate, the mortgage may make more sense than the rent to buy. If not, it could also make more sense sometimes. In this case, for instance, in Christopher's case, if he, if he says the rent in that house he wants to live in is 30, 34,000, isn't it? But if he took a mortgage, it would be 66. I would tell Christopher, why don't you think about renting that house? If you can afford 66, go rent, live there, because it's the house you want to live in. And because you have committed that you would have been paying your land, you would have been paying the bank 66. Why don't you take that extra 30, 33,000 shillings and invest it heavily in other real estate investments which you can afford and you start building assets. So is rent to buy a bad idea? No, but it, you have to assess it in line with all the options that are going to get you to that same space. And so to respond directly to that, that's a big mistake. That's why we spend uh, two and a half hours understanding debt and real estate, we also understand for two and a half hours, then you're able to sit back and say, for you, Kate, what's the best option for home ownership? Is it rent to buy? Is it that you buy a plot of land and build? If you can afford it, can you take a loan? Um, we are very, very slow, Kate, to start telling people which direction to go because we come from different places. And what we do is we present the information the way you can see, you do the calculation and then you make a decision. Have I responded to you? Yes, very good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I will compare and contrast. You have to. Yes, and, thank and you. And seeing how a loan looks, seeing how the options are in the market, that's where the difference is. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. All right, guys, there's uh, no more time. Um, this is Kiongo Vivian who's asking, do you guys connect in Uganda? Yes. If in fact you came for our open day session, we are in Uganda. We, have, we had a couple of students from Uganda now and we're hoping for lots more to join us. We've got a few people, uh, Burundi, we've had a few people, um, uh, Tanzania, we've trained there, but we've not had them in direct in the class. We've done corporate training. So this is now open globally. If you have friends and relatives around the world, tell them Centonomy is online and we want to see them in class. The options are there. Marilyn, I was asking you, how do people reach you? Uh, so I have my number that I'm going to, be, to put on the chat box. Uh -huh. And also my email so that if anyone, if anyone wants to ask any questions or wants to reach me, they can. So I'm going to put my email and the phone number on, in the chat box and okay. they can do that. Excellent. Thank you so much, yes, Marilyn. I've that. enjoyed this session. Thank you so much, Jess. God, Jess, God bless you as well. I've really enjoyed. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in on Zoom and also on Facebook. We've yeah, enjoyed you. your company. We want to see you in class because this is the time to transform Africa. Africa must rise. We must understand how investments work, how business works, so that we can begin to become a country, a continent of producers. That's what Africa must be. That's our, one of our missions at Centono. And uh, Jess and I um, will be doing a couple of Facebook lives after this. Yes. So yes. anyone can join us and I'm going to let Jess talk about that. Um, basically, it's just we've seen the need to continue with conversations online, especially in this period. So of course, we'll be continuing with more webinars as need arises, yes. Thank you so much for everyone who was able yeah. to join today, yeah. Yeah, true. And you can also just tell Jess what topics you'd like us to talk about. You can just inbox her. You can also just uh, write what topics you want to do. You want us to talk about on the Facebook uh, on the Facebook page, and we are going to plan around that. Yeah, 